Hi everyone, welcome to this talk by Oxford University Press. This is going to be a series of shorter videos that address frequently asked questions. But before I share today's frequently asked question, I would like to invite you to connect with me on Twitter, on my Twitter handle, which you can see here at Jennifer Wathall. Or if you would like updates from Oxford Press, then please also connect with them at their handle, which is at Oxford underscore IB. So what is today's question? Let's have a look. Today's frequently asked question is, how do we ensure vertical alignment from MYP to DP in terms of concepts? So let's revisit the pathways that the new Diploma Mathematics courses are being offered. We have four courses here, as uh, most of you have read already. We have analysis and approaches that is offered at SL and HL, and we have applications and also interpretations that's offered at SL and HL. But what happens before the diploma program? Well, you can see on this graph that uh, this chart that above we have the MYP uh, mathematics program uh, for years four and five that is offered at standard and extended level. So what is the alignment in terms of the conceptual framework from MYP to DP? So the MYP related concepts that are specified in the guide include these big concepts, they're called related concepts. And I think that these concepts serve as wonderful conceptual lenses that you can actually use when you are planning your units. I would recommend one or two per unit. The ones in white are the actual concepts that are unique to the MYP program. And the concepts in light blue that are shaded, they are actually the concepts that are common to the diploma program. So you can see what is unique to MYP is justification, measurement, and simplification. And then the concepts that are common to both MYP and DP include change, equivalence, generalization, etc. So let's have a look at the DP concepts that are actually specified in the guide, in the new guides. So we have approximation relationships and also validity, which is unique uh, in, in terms of the Diploma Mathematics recommendations. And we have the light blue ones that are common to MYP. So again, I would recommend one or two of these serving as conceptual lenses to really hope focus your unit of work. You will see that in the Oxford University Press books that we have one or two suggested uh, concepts at the beginning of every chapter to help you to help guide your students. Okay, so I want to give a little bit of a background in terms of the conceptual framework. And this was developed by Dr. Lynn Erickson. She consulted with the IB in terms of the MYP framework. And I think it's important that we see uh, how to use these concepts in MYP and DP. So she developed the structure of knowledge, which describes content driven disciplines. And like the animal kingdom has a structure and the plant kingdom has a structure, knowledge also has a structure too. So I'm going to show you a few examples of the structure of knowledge. Here is the first one. The first one is on the topic of trigonometry. So you can see that at the bottom there is a foundational layer called the facts. And in trigonometry, some of the facts could be a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or the trigonometric ratios in symbolic form. Now, if a student says to you a squared plus b squared equals c squared, this does not reflect any understanding. So what would be some of the concepts that we could actually draw from the topic of trigonometry? Well, we could look at right angle triangles, we could look at acute angles, ratios, and also look at similarity or similar triangles. And if we were to put this in a sentence of relationship that reflected understanding, one of the statements could be, students understand that similar right angle triangles share common ratios of the corresponding sides. Or if we wanted to look at the angles, we could say students understand that similar right angle triangles share a common acute angle. 
Now these statements are very important because they actually drive learning in the classroom. So we use these statements to create and design learning engagements for our students so that they arrive at these understandings. We ask factual and conceptual questions to elicit that understanding from our students and give them the opportunity to articulate and communicate this understanding. So in terms of the learning experiences, the Oxford University Press books have actually designed a lot of investigations that will help lead to these types of statements of conceptual understanding. And for this particular one on trigonometry, you can see here this investigation will actually lead to the understanding of the trigonometric ratios. We have similar right angle triangles here, and we're asking our students to measure the different sides in these similar right angle triangles and then to see the ratios of different sides. And then hopefully they will actually arrive at the understanding of the trigonometric ratios. Let's have a look at another example. So the next example is about quadratics. And you can see that the facts for quadratics are actually all the formulae, such as the quadratic formula, or it could be the discriminant, or it actually also could be the quadratic function, all in symbolic form. So in mathematics, a fact is anything that is in symbolic form or a formula. Now, what are some of the concepts that we could actually draw from the topic of quadratics? We could look at roots of an equation, we could look at also the zeros of a function, quadratic equation or functions in general, x-intercepts and also the square root or discriminant. And if we were to put two or more of these concepts in a sentence of relationship, here is what one of the statements could look like. Students understand that the equation underneath the square root sign in the quadratic formula, the discriminant, conveys its nature of the roots and highlights geometrical features. And that's what we want students to understand when they look at the discriminant. What is another statement of conceptual understanding that we could have? Well, we could have students understand that the quadratic formula determines the zeros of functions, the roots of equations, and the x-intercepts graphically. And if we were to design a learning engagement that would lead to this understanding, we have an example from the Oxford University Press book. So here is an investigation that looks at very specific quadratic equations and solving them. And obviously these, these quadratic functions, when you graph them, will have different nature of roots, a different type of roots. So that, that really helps students to arrive at the understanding of what the discriminant does. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that in the Oxford University Press books, we have developed many investigations that lead to these very important statements of conceptual understanding. And we've included the factual and conceptual questions to really help students be able to communicate and articulate those understandings. And we also have adopted an inductive teaching approach to really support students to be able to generalize for themselves through an inquiry-based learning process. Now, a little bit of alignment in terms of the vocabulary. So the statements of conceptual understanding that I discussed earlier, we can call them big, broad, overarching generalizations, or in the MYP, they're actually called the statements of inquiry, and in the PYP, they're called the central idea. Basically, these statements are two or more concepts that are connected in a sentence of relationship, and it really transfers and allows for deep understanding. Now, I want to mention a very important point about these statements of conceptual understanding. So, the IB guide in the diploma program in mathematics has actually got some suggested uh, essential understandings, they call them, and as well, they have some specified content-specific understandings. I think it's very important that we actually do not share these conceptual understandings with our students. 
So teachers are invited to develop their own for students so that they can then design learning engagements around these very important ideas. But I think it's important that we actually give our students the opportunity to articulate and to also communicate these understandings through these learning experiences. So we don't want to rob them of that uh, curiosity and that excitement of arriving at a very deep and important understanding in mathematics. So I've got a couple of examples from the IB Diploma uh, Mathematics Guide. Uh, here is an example uh, of an essential understanding that is at the beginning of the functions topic for the analysis and um, approaches course that you can see here. And then here is an example of some suggested content specific understandings that will really drive the learning inside the classroom. So this is also from the functions uh, topic. And you can see that these are, are more specific to the unit. So we really value your feedback and we really welcome you to pick up this QR code to uh, give us your opinions about this video. But also we will send a link to the digital copies of the new books. And I want to thank you so much for listening. I hope to see you next time. Please feel to connect with me uh, on my website, which is jenniferwaffle.com. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.